has a title, Eternal Value of Kindness. And uh, I would like to start from, uh, from, story, from a story um, that happened recently in August. And this summer, I have decided to repair one side of my fence. The fence was very old, and our neighbor, she has uh, two big dogs, which were scaring my children every time, you know. They're afraid to come even to this side of fence. The reason uh, our fence was failing apart is because we had bamboo. Do you know what it is? We had a lot of two sections of our fence, it was bamboo. Yeah, it looks like forest, <laughs> you know, for, for, our, for our small property. And I completely, I, every summer I try to clear up my part or my part of, or my side from bamboo, but it was really hard. And um, I decided that we need to change completely everything, you know. We need to clean up. We need to change the fans. And the, I came to my neighbor and asked her opinion about that. Would you like? Yes. And my next question was on my mouth. But when I, she, started to, um, she started sharing her story, I understood that my question I need to hide and left somewhere. Because when my neighbor, she is a single mother, she tried to work hard worker, and uh, recently she had surgery on her back. And she told me, I cannot help you to clean up that part of, from bamboo. I cannot help you. And I suggested her just um, split the cost of the materials. And me and my father, we decided uh, uh, to help her and clean her bamboo from her side, not just from my side. It was really, really hard. And uh, she was excited and grateful. Uh, and uh, me too. And we started. We started. And uh, when I took the fence apart, there were a huge stones from her side. I didn't know about that. I didn't have e any idea about that. And they were pushing on my side. But the worst part, worst part of this moment was bamboo. And uh, that is, was really hard to uproot bamboo and clean up. Oh, for, for those, my friends, of you who had to deal with bamboo, know how painful it is to uproot bamboo. An idea, we expected to, to refence or maybe repair this fence and install new fence just in one day. But uh, that took three days hard, hard work. You know, from that story, I got two lessons. First lesson, if you would like, or you may be thinking about planting bamboo, think twice. I will never volunteer, voluntarily uh, plant bamboo <laughs> next time. My, 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 my new house, maybe, or even on that place when we live right now. And second, second lesson, it's not easy to do good things. Sometimes it's easy to say, yes, I will help you. Oh, yes, I will support you. Yes, yes, yes. You are good. But it's not easy to do good things. And today I would like to open with you Bible 
book of Galatians, and we will read together chapter 6. Because Apostle Paul, he is talking about the same problem. This is not easy to do good things. And I would like to open chapter 6 again, uh, verse, and we will start from verse 7. Verse 7 and through verse uh, 10. You can follow me with, with reading. And I believe you know these verses. Uh, ver Do not be deceived. Yes? God is not mocked. For whatever is one sows that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone. And especially to those who are of the household of faith. Amen. Interesting Bible verse. Place of the Bible. Yeah, interesting. A lot of ideas. But question what I have from this Bible verse. What does Apostle Paul talk about when he says to do good? What does it mean in our practical life, in our spiritual life? What does it mean? Does it mean to give alms to the homeless on the crossroads? It's enough, and I forget about that in a second, in two seconds, three seconds. But what Apostle Paul is saying about to doing good? Apostle Paul says that doing good, and this is very important, is the result of spirit living in us. Amen. This is a manifestation of God's presence in my life. Amen? Amen? Yes. In our sinful nature life, resistance to the spirit, uh, we have that resistance in our, to the spirit and what he does. But when we submit ourselves to the spirit, then we will definitely bring, bring forth the fruit. A good fruit that we can share with others, with people around us. What is interesting we have in this Bible verse, and uh, I would like to look at, at the context of this Bible verse, of this text. We see that earlier, if you will open chapter 5, you will see, especially um, start from verse 16, you will see that Apostle Paul is talking about um, what is the fruit of flesh, and what is the fruit of what? Fruit of the Spirit, yes. And in all, the, in, uh, in all English translation, yeah, uh, yeah, this is illustration about our good deed. Uh, but what is interesting, uh, in all English translation, if you will open, I open it accordance and check it all English translation, when, you, when it's talking about the fruit of the Spirit, we see the word goodness. Did you check? Can you open Galatians 5.22? You will see goodness. And Romans 12.17.21. And we will touch that Bible verse. Word goodness. But in Greek, it is not, the, uh, um, it is word, uh, it, it is word kalos, or kalos that means good beautiful, worthy, valuable, and virtuous. And interesting that you cannot, you, you, you don't see any difference because, because you see good, goodness, good, 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 and uh, you don't see difference in, in these words. But in Greeks, you will see, you will find two words, kalos and agathos. And from our translation, it's hard to understand where is one word, where is another. But we will see uh, in our Bible uh, verse that idea and what does it mean for us. All, <coughs> the word kalos and agathos, or kalos, yeah, seems 
like they are synonymous. However, there is a between, uh, some difference between, uh, between them. And I would like to explain this difference. When we talk about agathos, and when we see how Apostle Paul using the word agathos, it is talking about characteristic or being good as a whole person. When we, when we see using word kalos or kalos, it talks about as a good deed or as a concept. For example, good which is up as a opposition of evil. What we see in chapter 5 and chapter 6, this is interesting for us. In chapter 5, Apostle Paul is talking about the fruits of the Spirit, yes? And, spirit, and the fruit of the flesh. And how the Spirit is manifested in our life. He is able to manifest His presence in our life. And then he goes and lists all the fruits, yes? 22, 23, if you will... Open, you will see uh, for sp uh, all fruits. And what uh, all this proof that the Spirit of God is in us. And it is important to understand for us. I will repeat, I would like to repeat that again and again. And I like that idea that the manifestation of these, pro of these fruits proves where we have the Spirit of God in us. Or not. One of the manifestations, uh, simple, simple example, if I hate you, it's hard to say that Holy Spirit inside of me, yes? It has some fruit. If I don't have patience, oh, this is a long story, yes? This is, that shows that some, some, I have some problems in my spiritual life, yes? Uh, and one of the manifestations of the fruits is goodness. And that word we find in 522. Can we read that, word, uh, that Bible verse? 522. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, yes? Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. This is what is important for us. This is the word agathos, characteristic of our character, yes? And faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such things, there is no, what? No law. Further, Apostle Paul is talking about the practical side of these fruits. And after chapter 5, we have, yeah, logically we have chapter 6. And what we see in chapter 6, what we see in chapter 6, how these fruits must be practiced at church. This is very interesting and important how he connected that goodness and those fruits with practical, how we can show that we have fruits in our, uh, spiritual fruits in our life. When we see chapter 6, can you, can you see chapter 6 verses from 1 through 4? You will see what we have. What we have. Yeah, we see how we must carry each other burdens. Yes, can you can we can you read first verse, brothers? If anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual, what, what you need to do, should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Yes, keep watch on yourself. And again, he he talks about that. He how we must. Be tender to the spiritual weaknesses of others. Yeah, if I have spiritual fruits or spirit or fruit of spirit, I need to have what? Patient to weaknesses of my bro brothers and sisters. Yes? I need to understand that we are not same. We are not perfect. All of us, we have what? Problems. Up and downs, yes. Okay, we, we are going to verse number 6. Then he goes further and says, how we must share good with those who teach us or who is minister, ministering to us. If you will go to verse 6, you will see, let the one who starts the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Hmm, good for me. 
Okay, what we have next? Verse in verse 9. Again, we have word good. Paul is talking about that the deeds we should not make us weary. Yeah? Can we read Bible verse verse 9? And let us not grow weary of doing what? Good. This is this is this is calling. And here, here in this Bible verse, we have word kalos. Because this is a practical action. This is a real action. If you if you're doing something, yes, it sometimes can bring what? Disappointment, maybe success, but this is a real action. And Apostle Paul is saying for us, let us now grow weary of doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up. And ta- verse 10, where the word agathos again is using. For the word good because of, uh, because our relationship must always have what? Goodness towards each other. Yes? It is impossible to, to do good f- to everyone. Yes? Because what Paul said for us. Can we read ch- verse number 10? So then as we have opportunity, let us do good for just for Tammy. For everyone. But how is it possible to do good for everyone? It's a little bit hard. Seriously. Even physically. But to have good attitude for each other, this is a real. This is the fruit of spirit. Yes? And here we have word agathos. Okay. Uh, the practical side of the goodness that is part of our character. And people must experience this good because it is not just a concept that flies somewhere. It is through your action and through your deeds that people realize that what is good and what is evil. And all these characteristics of the spirit working in us are demonstrated in the good we do. When Paul, Apostle Paul, is talking about to do good, he talks about the practical side of the doing of the Spirit. You know, when he is talking, we need to do that through our, we have that fruit through us, and we need to have real actions in our lives. The work of the flesh is what our flesh does, but the fruit of the Spirit is what God is growing in us. When God is growing this fruit in us, it manifested in the good deeds in our life. Amen? Again, I would like to repeat, so goodness is manifestation of the Spirit. When we do good, we allow the Spirit to work through us. In us, what we have in our life, in us resistance between our flesh and the spirit happens every day. Yes? Every day we, we have that. Very often we lose to our flesh. Yes or not? Or you're perfect. You don't have the temptations in your life. And it is not just any big decisions what we lose. Very often, my friends, we lose in small things because we lack spiritual discipline. And our life so busy. Our life so busy. And I believe your life too. In my life, we are, we are so busy. And sometimes we don't have time even just sit and pray. Yes? Sit and read the Bible to have this connection with our Lord. Oh, I, I, oh to more, I don't have morning time for prayer, for meditation. Ah, okay, I will listen just radio. Maybe some, some good stuff will come to me. But that will not help you, my friends. We don't have time. Even our lack of discipline in our diet might lead to what? Lead us to, to temptation. But at the same time, what we need to remain, uh, remember? We still remain the children of God. 
we are still the followers of Jesus Christ. And this is a good news for us. This is our blessing. The door, the door inside of us open for God to transform us. Yes? As soon as I am satisfied with my spiritual accomplishments, ah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm better than you. <laughs> I'm good. I'm on a dangerous way. Yes or not? As soon as I'm satisfied with my spiritual accomplishments, I stand on a very dangerous way that leads to rejection of this grace that, are, that has power to transform us. That has power to transform us through God's grace. My friends, the expansion of the God's kingdom, heaven, of heaven inside of us when we grow in the spirit of the Lord. And when we what? Have. When we grow in and we can show that fruit of the spirit. Yes? When we show this characteristic of the fruit. Okay, this is a Galatians chapter 6. And I would like to give you a couple more examples about, about good, about kindness or goodness. Uh, can you open with me 1 Peter chapter 2? And we will read uh, verse 11, I hope, yes. 11 and 12. Chapter, uh, 1 Peter, chapter 11. Oh, chapter 2, sorry. Chapter 2 and verse 11. Beloved, I urge you as sovereigns and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. And here what we have. Verse 12, very important. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorably. So that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good, what? Amen. Deeds. And glorify God on the last day. On the last day of visitation. Again, what we see, Apostle Peter, his advice for us. So when they speak against you, they may see your good deeds. They will see your good deeds in your life. And they will glorify our, our Lord. We see the same idea here in Apostle Peter. Uh, the, the sa same things that talk Apostle Paul before, yes? He talks about how we live in this resistance between the spirit and the flesh. But at the same time, Peter is mentioning the key factor, very important moment in our life, in our cycle of influence. Often in our lives, resisting the evil, we are influenced by evil. We find, okay, that when someone offends us, it's okay to be offended, to get offended. Yes, to get offended. No, as a Christian person, I will not answer him back, yes? But I have reason to be what? Offended. Do not talk with you for years, or maybe for months, for week. I I recently heard a story for about one couple, young couple. They they are in marriage for maybe five or six years, and they had problem in relationships, but they live still live together. But they don't talk for months. But how they communicate? Through text messages. For them it's too hard to live and sleep in one bed to talk with each other. To, I saw them in the same car, but really hard to talk, to forgive. But if you need to say something, you have your phone, yes? Phone, uh, your text messages option. Thanks to our natural instincts, we are behaving like fleshly people. We excuse such behavior. 
And it comes out that we do not believe in the good. And this is so sad, my friends, when we try to answer from that fleshly perspective. We do not, that shows that we do not believe in good. That we do, do not believe in the power of goodness of our Lord. You, do you understand that idea? Yes. If we believe in, in good, if we believe that God is the ultimate source of good and He would like to grow that fruit inside of me, I don't have any reason to show what? My fleshly reactions. I don't have any reason. Apostle Paul is showing that through the sinful person, through me, God of goodness is manifesting itself. Without being with the person, we are not able to influ influence them. And so Peter is saying that we are, are that we able to influence, influence this world through our good deeds. And question why? Because these are the real actions. Just through real actions, through real touch, we are able to what? To change life around us, yes? And uh, to help for some, for, for, for persons that are around, uh, close to me. One more Bible verse. One more Bible verse. Uh, we talk about that. Book of Romans, chapter 12. Just very fast. <laughs> chapter uh, 12, Romans. I would like to read maybe a couple verses and to see idea what Apostle, P, uh, pa, uh, Apostle Paul has for us. Uh, yeah, chapter 12, and I would like to read verse 17. Can you read with me? Reply, no one evil for evil. But what? Give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. And last verse of this, of this uh, chapter. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with what? With good. This is very important. Again, same idea. This verse talks about uh, how we can conquer the evil only by good deeds. Evil deeds will give birth to evil, yes? But goodness is what, we, what will truly destroy the evil. And the same, same idea we had in Galatians, yes? And question what we have. When we, uh, it is seeds of goodness we have or not. And overall, I believe that all of you, that we all try to be good. Yes? Every morning I wake up is this good idea. This day I will be good. I will react right. I, I will be perfect. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes after some disappointment in my life, I try, I pray and say, God, tomorrow, yes, I need to be perfect. Yes, I need to be good. Yes, stop. Yeah, I cannot. And we have progress. We, have, we, we are doing good, you know, in our life. We, we have the desire to be better, but we come to a certain point and what? Oh, yes, fall again in my life. We give in and we stop being truly good. And interesting Apostle, P, uh, Apostle P. Paul perfectly understands it. He knows. <laughs> he knows what, what is our problem, yes? He, le he lived in a real world, and he gives a really good ideas in Galatians chapter 6. It's the reason why I choose that chapter 6, verse 6 and 9. And let us not grow weary of doing good. This is a good advice for us, or not? We need to continue doing good. Yes, we have that up and down, but we need to have that desire. We need to continue to do good things in our life. And so we see that we are called not to grow weary to do good. Doing good is not that easy. Remember my story about bamboo? It's not easy to do good things. Because when we decide to do good, we take upon ourselves responsibility we have we here 
here is where we come to challenge. You know, people don't always react the way we expect uh, them to. Sometimes we try to help, but this is not what people need, yes? <laughs> we don't see that reaction. And the problem that especially when this act of kindness is long plain act. This is not just, like I said, um, just giving alms and pass by. And you forget about this person in, 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 in how many seconds? Yeah, you give one dollar, two, three, and for uh, some, something that you had a car and forget. But if you have that long story, if you would like to have for long, for long, or this is a, some huge act or big act in your life, we need to understand that we, we have to take risk, yes, that comes with a long acting kindness. One more story for you. One more story that will illustrate that idea much better. One of the, my member, uh, one of the members of the, of the church had their wall break down. Did you have that opportunity when your wall break down? <laughs> Maybe your in your life. There, were, there was no one help them, so I decided to help them with that. However, right before, just Sabbath before, this, we had a conversation where they managed to get offended by me. Uh, yeah, it was miscommunication and they, it was hard for them to accept what I said for them. And so you can imagine that they don't really want to talk with me at this point. But I still come next Sunday and offer to build this wall up for them, install new window. And at this point, they are still not too excited with my arrival. I made cement, took the bricks, and started building the wall. And they still do not say a word. Just show me where his materials is. Uh, uh, yeah, where can I find materials? Hour after hour, they are still silent. What do you think? What it was inside of me, especially after a couple hours? Inside of me, I had this voice of flesh. Man, what are you doing here? Why are you still continuing, you know? Because the people do not even want to talk to you, and you keep, still keep doing this for them. However, I had another voice, yes. The Holy Spirit is also telling me, you are not doing this because they are better good. You are doing this because I am calling you to do this. So by the time, in the end of the day, when I started to finishing the wall, they finally started to talk with me. And our communication was restored. And our relation was restored from that point. Yeah, and again, I would like to mention, don't get weary to do good things. In Galatians 5.16, we have interesting Bible verse. I would like to read it. It will be our last Bible verse for today. Galatians 5.16. This is a key moment for our spiritual growth, for, our, for balance in our spiritual life. 5.16. Please read with me. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. What we need to do? Walk in spirit. Yes, we need walk in spirit. This is a greatest solution. Very often we measure our success or failures by, by the reaction of those who surround us. Yes? However, the apostle is concluding something else. What is taking victory inside of me? Spirit. Of my flesh or my flesh. Spirit or the flesh. 
And this is the greatest, greatest object of our worry. What is the winning inside of me? The true source of goodness, who is? Jesus Christ, our God. Yes, a person can do kindness without God. Yes, the satisfied humans around him. But it is only in God that we have truly forgive the offense. And today, my friends, when we celebrate Thanksgiving, we give thanks for what we have. Yes? For all blessings that we have. have for, for, for blessings that God given us. And when we, we come to conclusions that God is the ultimate source of, of, the good, of goodness. The truth must also become an object of gratitude. Because God good, God's goodness pours out every day of my life. And today I can say, thank you, good Father. And at the same time, God wants His goodness to be shared among each one of us, and each one of His kids. And these actions of kindness that the Spirit manifests in us are not bounded by the immediate results. They have everlasting consequences. And I would like to sh finish my sermon today and that idea, and I would like to, sh to uh, finish that with one story that happened in my life. And I believe uh, I already told you a story about one of the sisters sister who came to Jesus Christ through my first evangelistic series that was completely failure. Remember that story? It was maybe one month ago in our sermon, uh, what, what, Oikos, what is it? Yes, we talk about that. And I share that story with you. And I would like to mention here that when she started, that woman came to church, she started to go to church, her husband was against her decision. He was really, really angry with that. He was pressuring her. And one time when I came to, to her with my Bible study, he just kicked me out of the house. Yes, it was really here. I will help you if you will not follow my words, you know. Whew, it was scary. However, after some time, after some months, I believe, um, when he left for his work for a few days, maybe for a week, I don't remember uh, all details, but I remember the fact that he left for his work. Uh, and that sisters got into hospital, to emergency room. She was in really bad uh, condition, a uh, healthy condition. It was really hard to see her, and her children live far away, and nobody could care, take care of her. Our sisters, our church sisters, they made the decision to take care of her and were taking um, turns to be by her side at such critical time. And they stay with her uh, at, at the hospital, and after three days, you can imagine, yeah, her husband came come back, and he saw how church family is taking care about his wives. He was in a great shock. Poof, I told you, that man who kicked me out before disappeared. He was in a great shock. And I also came to hospital to visit her, and this man who was kicking me out, a man at the age of my father, I was 20 years old man, got down on his knees and started to kiss my hands. It was, it was unreal, I told you. Even for me, I, I'm... I, I remember the story and the change that happened just in one minute in the life of this man. This was a turning point in his life. His attitude toward, toward church, toward God completely changed. This is what 
has the eternal value of kindness and goodness. And God does good work in us that is the investment of saving others. And may our God, our good Father, grow a fruit of kindness in each one of us. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, you are good. You are absolutely good. You are our Savior. You are our power. You are our source of life, of kindness, of goodness. If we, we are able to do something good, this is just because you inside of us. We thank you. We, today we celebrate and we would like to praise your love, your revelation, your words. Because all of that help us to see real truth in our life. We pray, please forgive us when we live in this condition when just I am the center of my life. Please forgive us and give us the desire to follow your words, to follow your example, to do good things in our life, to have these callous good deeds and to have that characteristic in my life that are godless for each other. Please bless us. Fill up us with new spirit, this new heart. You know, each one of us in our lives, if we are now in this condition, this point when we don't have hope, if we lose hope, if we broken, please heal us and change our life to better quality better spiritual quality. We pray in Jesus' name. We pray in your precious name. Amen.